But I, what I know is that I have had five consecutive um, evaluations that have met or exceeded expectations. The board does have the authority to decide whether or not it wants to extend a contract. They, are, they can speak for themselves, they can talk about why they did or did not extend the contract, but um, from where I sit, uh, the, um, the authority rests with the board and I can report on the outcomes of my evaluations, but as far as that extension is concerned, um, this is uh, this is at the board's discretion. Um, there, I have received uh, some feedback, you know, since the um, the announcement, and um, and it seems to be based in some conversations around um, collaboration with the board, at least as I see it playing out in the media. So, can I? Um, it looks like it's mostly focused on um, the board feedback. There are examples that I've heard that are outside of collaboration, such as the budget or um, uh, the philosophy behind the board's policy as it relates to charter schools. Um, and I, I'm trying to recall what I've read, but I can't off the top of my head. But there are some other examples um, that have been given uh, throughout the process. I can, do you mind if I do one other person? Go ahead. Um, well, it was a bit of a surprise on Monday for me, only because um, it was my understanding that the board was split, and that um, while I agree that there's not a majority for an extension, but there was not a majority not to extend either. So, um, so it is, uh, from my perspective, uh, a bit of a surprise, but, um, but to be fair to the board, I believe that uh, they are working to the best of their ability to, um, to manage the process the way that they see fit. That is under the authority of the board. Uh, you would have to ask the general counsel for the district about how they made the determination on posting the meeting or having the executive session or how they managed the discussion. That is not my area of, of expertise, and I don't advise the board legally. Are you wanting to stay? Why do you think uh, Oh, I think I've been very clear from the outset, um, and it is, it, is, it is not about keeping a job for me. When I was recruited to come to Atlanta Public Schools on the heels of the greatest cheating scandal in the history of public education, I know that this district was in transition between boards. But it was coming to Atlanta, seeing that search team, which was a mix of people, some board members, some community people, um, people were talking about it. And I am from the Deep South. I'm from Selma, Alabama. I've always loved Atlanta. But I felt like, given my skills and the needs of Atlanta, there was a great intersection where we could do wonderful work together. They needed a seasoned superintendent who cared about Atlanta and what they were up against. And I wanted to ensure that I used my expertise to help a community that I love. And I've always tried to do that, but this to me was a very perfect match. Now, the reason I've explained to the public and the board that I want to stay is because I believe the work isn't done. So it's not about just staying in the job. I was called to Atlanta, I believe, from a higher purpose, for a higher purpose from a higher God, quite frankly. And I just know that I was called here to do this work, to do the best that I could, and to actually finish the job. And in my opinion, that's, and I'm not only speaking for myself, that job isn't done. So I celebrate and love our team. They've done a great job of getting some progress and gains at a steady pace, not too crazy high, not crashing. So we're just kind of at a steady pace, a little up and down along the way, which is natural and healthy for an urban school system. Where I worry and want to make sure that I do everything I can to finish what we started is in the remaining work. Large achievement gaps between rich and poor. Large achievement gaps between blacks and whites. And other issues that we're still trying to address. 
like mucking out some of the other, you know, issues that comes with um, with culture that need to still be checked and put in place so that systems stay strong during any transition. So I love Atlanta. I've made it my home. My family lives here. My mom lives down the road. Um, and, uh, and for me, it is the match that I originally came for, but it is the love for the work and wanting to see the work through to a healthy place that, um, that I have made clear to the public, the board, um, and, and, and him. Well, I want to be clear, as the board and I both agree that we never, never had any clashes about the gulch. What we have concerns about is the impact of tax abatements, incentives, tax allocation districts on the pr in, in our collectible tax digest, which means that when there are so many pulls on limited tax dollars that are going out for um, development without being in check. So TADs like Atlantic Station that have a lot of debt and we don't see where it may close. Or TADs that are very healthy, but they're not paying off the debt in other TADs. Or pick another issue, like how much we can afford to do three key things. First, take care of the district and our staff. Academics and children are first and foremost. Second is helping our taxpayers where Atlanta Public Schools is the largest portion of that tax bill, and unless we do something to give them relief, they don't get relief from anywhere else. And then the third piece is we're happy to help Atlanta. It's constitutionally allowable, and APS has been participating in tax allocation districts since 1999. When you finish out the timeline for those, APS will have put about $1.4 billion, billion with a B, into development for this city. And all we're saying is we're happy to do that, but when you add another large pressure, whether it's the gulch or anything else, inside what we're already paying, it kind of breaks the bank for us. So all we were saying is that can we go back and renegotiate all of the five TADs while also thinking about the cost of the gulch plus the other incentives and abatements that are coming out of the two development authorities that pull out of the APS Digest, Invest Atlanta and the Development Authority of Fulton County. So when you put all those things together, the pressure sits today without the gulch at about $102 million out of the collectible digest every single year. So we know in our settlement, we were trying to bring that number down to about 10% of the collectible digest, which says to us that we can afford it and we don't care where the city spends the money. We can only do this much and you can put it in the Gulch, you can put it in South Atlanta, you can put it anywhere else. We recommend that you go in places that look like our children because it's the APS resources. So we'd like to see more support for south of the city where we know there hasn't been a lot of development. But we've never, it's this, we've never had an issue with the city and the Gulch. We did have a concern about how it was presented to us and that the board was not allowed to use its consent to participate. And we knew that we couldn't afford to consent under the current structure. So we now have a settlement agreement. All that water is under the bridge, at least from where I sit. You know, no harm, no foul, right? We got a great settlement agreement, and we'd like to move forward with that settlement agreement. So whether or not people are using that for, um, for you know, where we are now today, you would have to identify who you think those people are and ask them those questions directly. But as far as we're concerned, we did the right thing for Atlanta Public Schools, and I did not do anything that I did not have either board guidance or approval to do. I was the front-facing leader on that issue because I was directed to be. Um, absolutely not. I, love, I, I want APS to be successful, uh, hands down. 
The, our kids and our community has gone through way too much, starting with the cheating scandal, and some people say, even before the scandal, that things were kind of falling apart for high achievement or high outcomes um, throughout uh, the more recent decades. And so I wasn't here, and I don't know if that's true, and it's hard to track because state assessments and things of that sort have changed over time. But whatever it is, we know that by the time the aftermath of the scandal happened, APS was in very bad shape. So I will do everything I can to set up APS for the future, whether that's facility master planning or strategic planning or anything else somebody needs us to do. I am absolutely committed to trying to do that for as long as I can. I want our kids and our families to get the break they deserve to have access to a choice-filled life. And that is how I've always done my work. It's how I wake up every day to do my work. And no matter what happens in my job, I will never change being that person. Oh my God, I am, it gives me goosebumps. I'm blown away. I mean, just, it makes me shake. Humbled and um, energized uh, by the support. I mean, part of the reason why, you know, no matter what's going on, I've been able to, like, do my schedule and do the job is that it gives me um, great energy and, um, and just confidence that we're not alone. When I first started in APS, uh, there are people who have pride, like, in their individual schools. I mean, our alumni are the best. They are off the chain. They love their clusters and high schools like no other alumni I have ever met. And so I know that people have pride in their individual experience in APS. But as a district or the superintendent's office, we had a lot of brand damage after the cheating scandal. So it's sort of like that saying people say, um, I hate Congress, but I love my representative. It was sort of like, you know, I kind of hate APS, but I love my school. I love my teacher. I love my principal. And so what we need and what I think we've seen is a real shift. Um, something that I hope we embrace and find a way to galvanize. I am... I am so um, excited for the kids that parents and partners and business people and faith-based community are all saying today, which I never saw in my first year, that um, they are believing more in APS. They have not just pride in their children and their teacher and their principal and the school, but they have pride in the system that we brought integrity back to the title of superintendent's office or leadership team or uh, school board or um, programs. I mean, you name an area, they have more pride that they've been willing to articulate than I've ever seen in my five years. And so I think that that is a watershed moment for APS. Would have perhaps preferred a different, um, um, what do you call that, uh, a different mm, well, just like something, I, w I wish something else would have been able to show, would have triggered showing that. Some sure I'll just take it. <laughs> I mean, I just I'm looking for the right word, and it's just hard under uh, all the pressure. But um, God, don't you have some SAT words I can borrow? <laughs> Aren't you from Grady or something? Help me, Southerner. Uh, just in something else that would have gal you know galvanized seeing this. But but you know but you know that's maybe that's the silver lining. I'm glad to hear that Atlanta is actually saying they support Atlanta public schools. And, and, and make no mistake, I don't own what has happened in this district on my own. I tell people all the time, I don't mop every floor, clean every trash can, teach every class, drive every bus, lead every school. This is a massive, massive team effort from school board to superintendent to frontline staff to support staff, parents and kids. We have done and have started a movement for APS that I think 
I hope Atlanta will continue to be proud of and no matter what, continue to embrace and, um, and use for inspiration and passion to continue to deliver on this big work like strategic planning, like facility master planning, like anything else that we want to do for our children. I'm, I am honestly so, um, so grateful to see that happen um, while I'm here. Okay, so let, let me be clear. What I embrace is a quality education for a child. I am never going to judge a parent for choosing homeschool, private school, charter school, neighborhood school. I am not in that household. I did not give birth to that baby, right? So you, but, but, but hold on, let me, I'll, I'm trying to answer Martha. All right, all right. I love you. I love you. Um, but uh, so, so to me, what you, what, what you do when you're a superintendent is that you have to be an equal opportunity, high quality exp experience provider. So if you need to use virtual school, use virtual school. If you need to go to a charter school, go to a charter school. You need to go to your neighbor's school, go to your neighborhood school. That's, I support quality education. When you enter a district, there's generally policy guidance on what a community wants because a community elects a school board member who then creates policy and the administration creates the practice to implement it. Atlanta Public Schools has had a 19-year history with charter schools. It has been in policy for that long with administrator, administrative procedures that I follow. I'm not making up anything. We know that if a charter provider is interested in being a provider with the board's approval as an Atlanta Public Schools charter, they have to follow that policy, they have to follow the application process, and I don't get to choose. I don't get to be the judge on whether or not Right? I like them or don't like them. That's not the issue. It's whether or not they met the standard of the policy and their application is done at a quality level that makes it so that the superintendent can then recommend the charter school. This doesn't happen by accident or I don't go make it up and pick something over another. There is direct board guidance for 19 years. If we don't want charters, it's very straightforward. Don't have a policy that says they can apply. If you don't want a charter and it is recommended by the superintendent after they follow the process and check the box on all the things that are required, vote it down at the board table. But I follow policy and practice. I don't get to choose how I do that. And that has been in existence for almost two decades. But let me give you a data point. APS, in the five years that I've been here, has not approved a new independent charter in the entire time. 